I already started it. Oh, okay. So the first thing you want to do before you start throwing on the wheel is to gather all of your supplies and tools so that you don't have to get up. You want to make sure that you have your clay and it is wedged and ready to be thrown on the wheel. You want to have water so that you can be washing your hands and a sponge. Um, the first thing you want to do is make sure that your wheel is clean but um, a little bit damp so it's ready to stick the clay on. A lot of potters will throw the clay down onto the wheel. I have really bad aim, so I place it as close to center as I can. And then I smack it down a few times. You want to do this because you do not want your clay to fly off the wheel when it starts spinning. So it's connected to the wheel head tightly. I want to make sure it's in the center of the wheel so that I don't have to struggle with it while I'm trying to center it. Over here I have my pedal, and it operates just like a car. The wheel goes pretty fast. When you center, you want it to go fairly fast. You want to get your hands wet as well as the clay. This reduces the friction, and the clay is able to slide between your fingers. You can see that my hands are bumping around all over the place. This tells me that the clay is not centered. My goal is to get it perfectly centered so that it, um, I can throw a pot. Centering the clay, I'm breaking my elbows against my body. I'm pushing in with my left hand and I'm pushing down with my right. You can see that now it looks like the clay is sliding through my hands and they're not moving. And that's centering. Now I need to open up my clay. I'm going to slow down the wheel. Some potters use their thumb, some potters use their middle finger. I like to use a combination because I don't feel like my fingers are strong enough. And I'm just going to press an opening down into the clay. Notice that I use my right hand to guide my left hand. You never want to touch the clay with just one hand. It knocks it off center. I made my opening and I'm just going to widen that opening. So I have the piece about as wide as I want to make it. I'm going to make a cylinder. If you notice I'm going back and forth on the bottom with my fingers, that's because clay likes to be compressed. You want to compress the bottom of your clay by pushing straight down and that will avoid your piece from cracking as it dries. Now I've opened my piece up, I've compressed the bottom, and now I'm going to start to pull the sides. Students like to pull the sides up like this, and this is not productive. You pull the sides up with both hands working together. 
each hand should always be touching the other and you will squeeze between either your fingertips or between your knuckle and your fingertips. The squeezing together of the clay is actually what drives the clay together and then you pull up. As I reach the lip of my pot, I want to release my grip gently and easily. And I'm moving less clay as I move to the top so I don't have to squeeze as hard. That was my first pull. Most potters will tell you that you need to get the height of your piece within three pulls or your piece will become too weak from the water. You notice I'm constantly wetting my hands and that's so that um, my hand is not pulling on the grog. Grog is the sand-like particles of clay inside of this clay body because I'm using a low fire stoneware. Some clays don't have any grog, like porcelain. They're really nice to throw with, but they're very particular. I'm gonna start throwing with a sponge in my hand because as I'm moving up, I can feel the clay grabbing at my hand. So if I throw with a sponge in my hand, I can squeeze out water as I'm moving up the side. That's about as much height as I'm going to get. If you look down on the inside of my piece, you can see that there's quite a bit of water standing. I need to get that water out or it will crack as it dries. So I'm just going to squeeze out my sponge, bracing my elbow with my hand, and I'm just going to dip it down in there. While I'm doing this, I'm also pressing on the bottom, again compressing the bottom of my piece to help reduce the crack. If I want to do any shaping of my piece, this is when I do it. I'm going to collar the piece in a little bit. So I'm making the opening more narrow. This is called collaring. I want my lip to flare out just a little bit. I don't, I don't like the shoulder right here, so I'm going to put my hand inside. I'm going to push it out from the inside just a little bit. Make that shoulder a little more gradual. shape I want for my piece. I'm going to trim the bottom. There's a lot of extra clay at the bottom so that it attaches to the wheel head and I'm going to trim that extra clay away now. This is called a wooden angle tool. See, I trimmed quite a bit of clay away, and that really changed the, the look of my piece. I don't like this ridge right here, so I'm going to use my rib to smooth that out. So 
so I like the shape of my piece and I like the foot. I'm going to trim that up later by turning it upside down. I can't do that until it's dry. So I'm going to use the wire tool to remove it from the wheel head. You have to pull the wire tight between your fingers, press down with your thumbs to the wheel head and pull towards you. A little trick is to add some water to your, to your wheel head and pull that water underneath of your piece and it will help come off faster. I'm going to clean up my hands before I try to move my piece and I'm going to use something called pot lifters. This way I don't have to actually touch with my filthy hands my nice pot. And now I can set it on the shelf to dry. Tomorrow I'll trim the bottom.